I know everybody's saying, Kyle, what about Jim Harbaugh? And I would say, what about Jim Harbaugh? You didn't, you think Big Ben can't quarterback because he threw a pick yesterday? So he's still great. Coaches win games and lose games. Bill Belichick got fired in Cleveland. Still a coach. Nick Saban didn't do much at Michigan State or the NFL. Jim Harbaugh is a great coach. Four for four turnaround jobs. Got to a Super Bowl. So what he lost to Ohio State? Ohio State's better. <laughs> Go look at the last 16 times Ohio State's played Michigan. I think Michigan's won one. None of their coaches can beat Ohio State. Because Ohio State's a better program with better athletes. And Urban Meyer's pretty good. Coming up in 15 minutes. Oh, Jamie Maggio's here. Sorry about that, Jamie. I start <laughs> ranting. I lose my mind. I'm low on blood sugar, blood period, because my nose exploded driving to work yesterday, and I'm a mess. Uh, it's great to have you in on a Monday. Thank you. 15 minutes from now, Super Bowl champ and 11-time Pro Bowler Rod Woodson, one of the great all-time players, joins us in studio. In Best for Last, every Monday, I give you NFL every NFL game from the weekend described in three words, the three-word game. But first of all, I'm watching Aaron Rodgers last night, so are you, and I'm watching him against the Minnesota uh, Vikings lose, and it reminded me of that famous line. Remember that line from the movie Jerry Maguire, show me the money? I'm more of a show me the evidence. If you're going to tell me you're great, i got to see you're great. Stats, Super Bowls, rings. Aaron Rodgers is now 1-9 and nine in his last 10 road games. I know, I know, it's not his fault. It never is. It's his defense. Oh, wait, they're third in the NFL in sacks. It's his running game. He doesn't have one. No, actually, Aaron Jones is dynamic, averaging over six yards a carry. Mike McCarthy's a buffoon. Really? He resurrected Brett Favre's career. Come on now. Come on now. Show me the evidence. You got to give me something. Stats? No, Breeze has those. Trophies? No, Tom has those. You got to show me something. You got to show me some evidence. You've been telling me, all you media guys and all you fans for a decade have been telling me, oh, he's got a great arm, great arm, great arm. All right. So did Jeff George. I mean, a million guys have a great arm. It's the NFL. Joe Flacco's got a great arm. Show me the evidence. Ask yourself this. Is that... You know how they write those business books on what it takes to be a great leader and a great CEO? You can go to a library, go to Amazon.com, look up business books. There's a million of them. I've read a handful in my life. Here's the qualities they never say make a great leader. Aloof, condescending, arrogant, difficult to work with. Those are not qualities of Aaron Rodgers. Those are now his brand. If I say to you, Hall of Fame quarterback, condescending, you think Aaron Rodgers. Hall of Fame quarterback, aloof, hard to play... You're saying Aaron Rodgers. It's like saying Joe Flacco's inaccurate. That's his brand. That's not a quality. That's who he is. Jay Cutler, moody. That's not a quality. That's his brand. Tom Brady, driven, passionate. Not a quality. That's his brand. I mean, Aaron Rodgers, you notice this with Green Bay? The longer he's there, the uglier it gets. Because people that are difficult to work with, you can tolerate them for a year, deal with them for two appease them, placate them for four, but after about nine, you want to strangle them. But Colin, you're picking on Aaron Rodgers. Why the hell would I do that? Do I pick on LeBron? Do I pick on Steph Curry? Do I pick on Roger Federer? Do I pick on Serena? Well, when have I ever picked on the great? Do I pick on Do I pick on the Warriors? Do I pick on Tom Brady? Do I pick on Russell Wilson? Do I pick on Andrew Luck? Do I pick on Drew Brees? Who do I pick? I picked on Tebow because he wasn't very good. I pick on Westbrook, great but hard to play with. And yes, yes, I pick on Aaron Rodgers. No, I don't. I'm honest. And you're all coming around now. I used to get a lot of pushback on this. I used to get nothing but hate mail. You don't know what you're talking about. You know what I get now? Silence. And that's what I know I'm right. Because fans are not going to admit they're wrong. I get that. That's okay. It's part of the deal. But when fans disappear, that's when you're right. The Westbrook fans... They don't, they don't push back. They just disappeared. The Aaron Rodgers fans, they don't push back. They just disappeared. I don't hear from them anymore. I mean, again, I'm not saying it's all Aaron's fault. But he can't take a little blame. He's not a little rough to work with. I have four former Packers I know all said the same thing. Favre McCarthy got along great. Aaron McCarthy, major fissures. One and nine, last ten on the road. Here's a stat. Show me the money, show me the evidence. So Breeze has the stats, Tom has the trophies. Aaron Rodgers is now 0-37 after last night's loss to the Vikings. He is now 0-37 for 37 when he enters the fourth quarter of any game trailing by more than a point. 
And the team he's playing in that moment, at that moment, has a winning record. Now think about that. Aaron Rodgers has never won a game. 0-37. When he enters the fourth quarter, trailing by more than one point against the team in that moment. Now that may not be a great team. Many of them aren't. But in that moment, they have a winning record. Come on now. You keep telling me, well, he needs the right coach. I'm not saying he and McCarthy are a good mix. But does he need Sean McVay? Does he need the perfect running game and the perfect defense and the perfect coach and the perfect schedule? Because the greats don't. Um, let, let me shift gears to the Steelers. So everybody's going to beat up on Big Ben today. I get it. Terrible, terrible interception late. I get it. Today, every this morning, every sports radio host, man, woman's going to crush him. I would like to point out that James Conner, red zone fumble, fumbled the ball when there was nobody around him. And at the end of the first half, a tight end fumbled the ball out of the red zone and they lost possession. Those weren't Ben's fault, right? But here's the, um, here's the number I want you to look at, not the score. Not the score. Here's what I want you to look at. Big Ben was 41 of 56 passing. And I want you to think about 56 pass attempts. 56 pass attempts. He leads the NFL in pass attempts this year. And that's on a good team that generally doesn't trail games late and have to pass with a good team with a legitimate running game that could run the ball. The Pittsburgh Steelers allowed him yesterday to throw the ball 56 times. Why is that a big deal? Here's why it's a big deal. You parents out there, you can brag about your kids' grades. Oh, little Johnny got an A+. Plus. Little Susie's a perfect student. All you parents out there, you can brag about your kids' sports accomplishments. He hit a home run. She scored a goal. But you know when you got good kids? When you can leave for the weekend and trust them. The Pittsburgh Steelers, with a running game, said, Ben, we're leaving for the weekend. Throw it 56 times. Lamar Jackson's really good. Last two games, media falls in love with him. He has 44 attempts in two games. They're babysitting him. Baker Mayfield's amazing. Last two games combined, 46 attempts. They're babysitting him. Those teams are telling you what they think of Lamar and Baker. They like him. They got talent. But when those parents leave, uh, they call the nanny. They call the babysitter. They make sure there's eyes on the quarterback. Not Big Ben. That family's going to Europe for eight days. There's alcohol all over the house, keys to the car. And they're like, we trust you. Watch your brother and sister. We're going to France. We'll be back in eight days. When you allow a quarterback in Denver, good defense, two great pass rushers on the road, throw it 56 times. That is incredible respect by an organization. Coming up next, Rod Woodson plus what are we, what are you, what am I supposed to make of New England this year? Because they're doing the same thing they've done for a decade. It looks the exact same. The numbers are the same. The results are the same. But has the league changed beyond them? That's coming up. Plus the three-word game, every NFL game in three words. When it comes to costly car repairs, you need options. I need options. Instead, you're often stuck bargain hunting for the best deal because who can afford to fork over $1,800 for a repair? That's why you want extended vehicle protection from CarShield. They've handed out two billion dollars in claims they make the process of fixing your car truck for a covered repair really easy all you have to do is get your favorite mechanic it can even be the dealership you bought the truck or car from you choose them and then car shield does the rest they provide roadside assistance 24 7 uh they'll get you a rental car while yours is being fixed all for free eight hundred dollar check eighteen hundred dollars sometimes you just don't have the money to fork over if you get into a small wreck uh, a sensor light goes out get covered by the ultimate and extended vehicle protection call 800 car 6100 800 car 6100 and mention the code heard or maybe